Hey, what's up guys, Josh here. Welcome to part two of the HE60. Looks a little bit different than the last time you saw it. This is gonna be part two of a three-part series. The first part was HE60 resurrected, kind of bringing it back from the state that uh, Israel bought this in. And this part is gonna be the HE60 revived because we got it uh, working in pretty prime condition. And then there's gonna be a part three follow-up to this pretty soon which is gonna be the last part, which is going to be HE60 reviewed. We'll do a full breakdown of the sound quality. But for now, I wanna go over the mods and everything that we've kind of done on this so far. And then I actually have a straw poll link to vote what uh, the final version of this headphone is gonna look like. More information on that in just a second. Okay, so many of you right off the bat are gonna be saying that is not an HE60. Uh, black headband, black grills, and that's true and I'll explain everything. I do have the standard grills here. Um, and I had the standard headband. So uh, we wanted to kind of experiment with darker themes for this because uh, the the standard purple is kind of, you know, it, it looks a little kind of put together via parts bin and we wanted it to be a little bit more uniform. It's not as perfectly uniform as we would like to eventually make it, but it's pretty close. But we also wanted to reach out and get your feedback on which one you like more, whether it's the original look or the modified dark look. So let me go over everything that's changed since the last time we talked. So uh, the last time I had an update on this, I said that Sennheiser would still service the headphone. I was working off of information that was unfortunately wrong. And so I provide a little bit of misinformation for you, to you guys. I apologize about that. Sennheiser does not service this headphone. Uh, we reached out to them and unfortunately, uh, they don't have uh, servicing capabilities. They don't even have replacement parts for any HE60. So all parts that you have to buy are gonna be um, not necessarily secondhand because we were able to purchase some parts new like the pads, which we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, but for the most part, you have to get everything on uh, kind of off brand websites. So since Sennheiser wasn't gonna clean it, we actually had a hell of a time getting into the headphone to clean the actual drivers because there was a lot of popping issues. There was a lot of dust. The previous owner of this uh, did not take good care of it, unfortunately. Uh, and the reason why we had issues with it is because the screws that basically uh, seal the back grill, unlike a normal um, kind of HD 600 or HD 650, which you can actually just pop off the grill separately. If you have like a small screwdriver, you just poke it through. Uh, these were actually screwed in but the screws that they used were pretty low quality and the previous owner had unfortunately stripped them and they were really, really small and the position that they were in was really difficult to get to. So we eventually did get it open. I can't remember how Israel, uh, who's the owner of this and a friend of the show, I can't remember how he got it open, but he was able to get it open and pull off the grills and clean the drivers. And I'm very happy to report that cleaning the drivers, cleaning the dust off, got rid of all of the popping issues. So before we were kind of having like a staticky sound and some uh, kind of intermittent popping and we couldn't figure out if it was the cable or the drivers. And we were hoping that it was just the dust and luckily it was. And now the issue is basically completely resolved and it doesn't have hardly any issues. Every once in a while I get like a little bit of a tick or something like that, but overall pretty good performance. So a lot of the stuff that we have on here right now is kind of retrofitted, except for one thing that we were able to find new, but not from Sennheiser, which is gonna be the HE60 pads, because it does require a custom pad, uh, standard HD 600 and 650 58X pads and replacement pads from companies like Tacony. They do not fit on this headphone. So unfortunately you do have to find a pad specifically for the HE60. Luckily we were able to find a pair of original like Sennheiser branded HE60 pads. These pads on here right now are the original pads that came on this headphone um, or you know that were sold with this headphone originally. Uh, and these pads are actually really nice. Uh, they're perforated leather on the inside, velour on the part that touches your head and then real leather on the outside, or at least it feels like real leather. Really nice and a, actually a bigger opening and you can kind of see it there. They're actually a bigger opening than uh, the standard HE or HD 600 series. Um, it's quite uh, big and spacious and they, they fit quite nice. So if we remove this and I'll remove it in B-roll to show you guys, there's a grill on the inside of this that right now is currently a little bit loose and you can kind of actually hear it there. Originally, since we have like no schematics for this headphone, like I, I couldn't find any online, Israel doesn't have any, uh, we 
couldn't really find any schematics, so we were kind of basing off of what we thought. And it looks like there's a seal on the inside of the headphone where you can actually fit this grill in, but it actually doesn't go there. There's actually supposed to be a rubber grommet that goes around it and you can actually put it on from the outside. And the original owner, for some reason, either got rid of those or broke those or they you know, cracked over time or something like that. And we don't have those rubber grommets. So we're not really sure what we're gonna do. The pad holds it in place so it's not gonna move and it's not gonna fall into the driver or anything but it is still a little bit loose. We would like to find some sort of system to kind of seal that in. I'm thinking multiple layers of like electrical tape around the circumference of the grill, and that way it has something to kind of grip the uh, inside of the headphone, and it, that way it's not gonna be loose. Uh, but it's an imperfect fix for a messed up situation. I'd like to find something that fixes a little bit better. So if you have any suggestions, comment section down below, please. Okay, then we have the headband and the grills. So these probably look pretty familiar. They are the HD 660S grills, and they fit uh, just about perfectly on the outside, although they don't screw in uh, like the originals did. This headphone doesn't have the bracket that the standard 600s have, and the original grills don't have these half holes that this one does. Um, and it's not that big of a visual difference. I think it personally looks pretty sleek, but where we wanna involve you guys is whether or not you think we should keep the original headband and the original grills. These grills are in really good condition, uh, but the purple and the headband's kind of purple slash pink and kind of sparkly. And it's cool for the originality of it. And that's part of why we want to keep it that way is to have kind of, a, you know, have it be an original thing and we're always going to keep the parts. Uh, but this just looks so much more modern and so much sleeker and like a little bit cooler. So let me know what you guys think. Should we keep it original or try to go for the matte black everything? That's going to be the Stropple link down below. So in this form, it's pretty close to just about finished. I'd prefer this headband to be the 660S headband rather than the 58X because this is glossy black and I prefer the matte black because I think this, you know, matte black everything would look so sexy, but this is the best we can do right now. Um, somebody did offer and email me an offer. We're still considering that, but we want to figure out what we're going to do before we do go ahead and purchase that uh, 660S headband. Now to briefly bring up the cable again, the previous owner changed it for a sax adapter, which I am appreciative of because um, the original HE60 Energizer was supposed to be not that great. Um, and this has held up over time. It's a little janky and it's not exactly as straight as I would personally like, you know, but uh, it works and it seems to work well and it doesn't have any intermittent connection issues or anything like that. So I think we're gonna keep it this way on the cable side uh, and not mess with it. Otherwise, the cable's in pretty good condition. You know, it doesn't seem to have any cracks or kinks that cause us any issues. So the cable's gonna stay the same same way it is right now, I think. So as far as an update goes, that's basically all I have. I don't quite wanna talk about sound. I wanna save that for the actual review where it's just gonna be a sound review. And uh, that's gonna be part three. That's gonna be coming out in a little way. So definitely subscribe for that future update. Uh, until then, thank you very much for watching. I'd appreciate your guys' feedback on whether we should go with the uh, matte black everything or keep it original. I'm actually really curious what you guys are gonna prefer, either the more modern look or keeping it kind of classic. So looking forward to those results. I'll share those with you in the full review when we get this headphone back to what you guys like the most. And then that will be what I actually review. All right, guys, until the next video, my name is Josh signing off.